Hey family, Kelly here. It's New Testament week four in the Drakestone Aquarium. This week, I'll share my fish flicks on Peter's first interactions with Jesus Christ, as recorded in John 1 and Matthew 4. So sit back, relax, enjoy the tank, and let's chat. Back in week one, I mentioned that when I was younger, unanswered questions or what appeared to be inconsistencies in the scriptures tended to shake my faith. I wasn't blessed with a believing heart. Instead, I got an overly analytical, often downright skeptical mind, which wasn't exactly conducive to faith. At least, that's what I thought. But remember Ether 1227. If we humble ourselves before the Lord and have faith in Him, then He will turn our weaknesses into strengths. Once I stopped fearing those faith-shaking questions and started facing them head on, I learned that those difficult questions can lead to deeper understanding if I'm willing to put my trust in the Lord, explore them in faith, and if I have the patience to search His Word until I find the answers. I have to be willing to pay that price because I've found that the search often yields knowledge of greater worth to me than does the final answer to the original question. Faith-shaking questions can lead to greater faith because searching God's word for answers opens us up to revelation if we're willing to receive the message the Lord would send us. Today, I'm going to take you through an experience I had with this and share with you the conclusion I came to and the things I learned along the way. As I read this week's material, I came across what appeared to be an inconsistency between John 1 and Matthew 4. In Matthew 4, 18 through 20, we see Jesus calling his disciples from among the fishermen. Peter immediately leaves his net and follows him. Now, I had always heard this story told like this was the first time Peter encountered Christ, and he had such faith right away that he immediately left his net to follow the Savior. John chapter 1 tells a completely different story. In verses 35 through 37, John the Baptist identifies Jesus as the Lamb of God to two of his own disciples, one of whom was Andrew, Peter's brother. On a side note, the Bible Dictionary proposes that St. John might have been the other unnamed disciple. Throughout his record, you'll notice that John refers to himself as the other disciple. I'll link that below. Those disciples then spoke with Jesus, who invited them to come with him. Instead of going with Jesus right away, Andrew went home, told Peter he had found the Messiah they'd been looking for, and then brought Peter to Jesus. Now, to my analytical mind, that's someone telling conflicting stories about Peter's first interaction with Jesus. Which is it? Did Peter drop his net to follow Christ? Or did Andrew bring him to Christ? And immediately, I started having thoughts about the Bible writers not getting their facts straight, and how this glaring inconsistency really makes it look like a lie. Because that's the kind of thing that pops into your head when you've got an extremely analytical brain instead of a believing heart. But here's the thing. One sick fish doesn't mean it's time to give up on the whole aquarium. It means you need to catch Sicko and plop him in a quarantine tank for closer examination so you can deal with whatever he's got. So I reread the accounts, and as I pondered, I had a few realizations. First, John and Matthew are two different people, and even when two people witness the same thing, different details will stick out in their minds because of their own life experiences. If this were a court case and two different people told the exact same story, you'd assume they'd gotten together and concocted the whole thing. The whole point of having multiple witnesses in court or in the scriptures is to get those different points of view so you can piece together the whole story yourself. And that was enough TLC to get Sicko looking a little more lively. I couldn't leave it at that though, because this scriptural fish still wasn't well enough to swim with the others. More pondering ensued, and ultimately, I realized that the two accounts actually describe different parts of Peter's journey to becoming a disciple. I think Matthew emphasized the moment when Peter answered Christ's invitation to be his disciple because Matthew himself had a similar experience. John's record, I believe, emphasizes what happened before Peter answered the call, possibly because John himself witnessed those events. Through his account, we learn of Andrew's diligence in looking for the coming Messiah, both for himself and on behalf of Peter. In his search, Andrew became a disciple of John the Baptist, who then led him to Christ. And when Andrew found the Savior, he brought Peter to him. 
My theory is that St. John 1 describes Peter's first meeting with Christ. The foundation for Peter's faith in Jesus as the Messiah was laid here. Then, after this initial meeting, is when the events in Matthew 4 happened, where Jesus calls the fishermen to come follow him. At that point, Peter had already met him, he knew who he was, and now that the promised Messiah was calling him to action, Peter was ready to answer that call. So not only did my doubt-inspiring sick fish of a question lead to a more in-depth look at those events, it also taught me the importance of being a good example to our families. Although Peter would go on to be the head apostle after Christ's death and resurrection, it was actually his brother's faithfulness that helped him find the Lord in the first place. Of the two, it appears that initially Andrew was more actively seeking the promised Messiah. So what can I do to help my family grow in faith? Like Andrew, I have to start with the source of truth for myself. Andrew found truth in John the Baptist, the prophet, the forerunner to Christ, and then he showed diligence in seeking truth from John, and not just listening to his teachings, but acting on the witness John gave. Like him, I need to find the truth for myself, and then I need to act on it, live it myself, before I can lift another. Once Andrew found the answer he sought, he shared it with Peter. Is there a member of my family who, like Peter, is searching for the truth but might not know where to find it? Something else to consider is that Andrew and Peter both had the same question, where can I find Christ? So ask yourself, are there questions, points of doctrine, or scriptural passages that me and my family members are curious about that we can explore together? Searching together for answers to life's questions can help us grow closer to each other as we grow closer to Christ. I gotta take a quick tangent here. That's true for gospel study in general. Jediah and I started reading the scriptures together back when we were dating, and it brought us closer to each other. It's so important, especially in courtship, to have that unity of faith, to know you're both equally dedicated to Christ and you're working toward the same goals religion-wise. That kind of unity is key to the foundation you lay for marriage. So to my young or single viewers, before you say yes, Make sure you both want the same thing when it comes to your faith. You don't want to have to choose between God and your spouse. End of tangent. The moral of the story is this. Don't fear questions, but do approach them with faith and a willingness to search the Lord's word for the answers. The answers are there, no matter what your overly skeptical mind tells you. And don't be afraid to involve your family in your search. Like the biblical historians, we each have a unique perspective on the gospel, and there's much we can learn when we compare points of view. Next week, we'll burrow into Matthew 3, Mark 1, and Luke 3. Enjoy your feast upon the words of Christ, and remember, we're all brothers and sisters in God's family. We're in this together.